here we go to uh, Memorial Day weekend. And I got to tell you, I went to a funeral yesterday, and I brought balloons, and I went up to the family, and I said, happy fe- funeral day today. Mm. Right? Yeah. Uh, I didn't do that. But uh, that would be equivalent, kind of, to saying, hey, happy Memorial Day. So not appropriate. Right, Andrew? Andrew was writing me first thing in the morning. Remember, it's not happy Memorial Day. Um, but it is a very special weekend, and of course, uh, remember what it's all about. And, and that is the, I think the the thought behind the weekend is to remember all those who have given, you know, the ultimate sacrifice to, uh, you know, to protect what we have here, which we often take for granted. Which we do. Um, I also take uh, Mother Nature for granted, and I got to tell you, I was out in the parking lot a few minutes ago taping the. Did, has anybody seen the rabbits out there? No. There's a whole. There's two little baby rabbits. I yeah, and there's the going to be about six more by the time the show's done. <laughs> Is it? Uh, that's how they do it, isn't it? So uh, it's amazing that you, uh, the little rabbits, don't know enough to run from a dangerous me, and uh, how close I was able to get. I could have. Really? I was like two feet from them. Uh, I could show you the video. You can post it. But I was like two feet from these little oh, rabbits. That's one of the benefits of coming in so early in the morning. You get to see... The skunks. S- <laughs> well, and there's deer. I've seen a fox. Uh, this is a, a scary place for deer to be here yeah. because we're right, in the, uh, right on the throughway. Um, speaking of animals, uh, I, I, we have a lot to get to. Hotel Utica, big news. Um, and we'll have uh, Bill Morehouse later on this morning in studio. Uh, oh, I guess he's on the phone. Either way, we're going to speak with him. Uh, we'll talk about this holiday weekend, the travel and all of that. There's much to much to get into. Uh, did you see this story in Albany where a dozen porcupines were found beaten to death? What? Yeah. It's the oddest story. You probably would never expect it to even have a story like this. That a dozen somebody porcupines? could even get a dozen porcupines. And they, uh, police authorities out there say they now think they know the kids that did it. Uh, but they cannot press any charges because porcupines are considered nuisance wildlife. So there was nothing. There's nothing they can do with the, these kids. Uh, so did they? Is this a situation where they round up a hundred porcupines and okay. then beat them I to just, death? I just, for the record, want you to know I've lived here my whole life, and I don't think I've ever seen a porcupine. Yeah. Really? I, Even dead on the side of the road? Uh, maybe dead on the side of the yeah. road. Yeah. I second all of that. Yeah. But uh, but standing there to be able to, to and and oh by the way, um, why would I want to? Right? <laughs> right. They're kind of cute. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess they are until you know you get up close to one and, right. and honey, get the camera. It's a porcupine. And I, and, I <laughs> and, and correct me if I'm wrong. The porcupine and maybe somebody can explain this to us. The porcupine doesn't really throw its um, its quill. Sp- can we say quill. spears quill spiel or yeah. Spears. It's, it's, uh, um, uh, it, you actually have to make contact like with it. I believe you have to make contact with it. And the one thing that I guess we, I have seen is a dog that made contact with a porcupine. Oh, yeah. And it can be really bad. Yeah. Anyway, these kids found, uh, what did we say, eight New York teens. Okay, they were charged, eight New York teens, and it was nearly a dozen porcupines. So it was eight teens, a dozen porcupines. Uh, found beaten to death, but an upstate New York sheriff says there's nothing you can do. Um, however, they uh, say that they're worried because killings, uh, a killing of animals like this almost um, oftentimes, a yeah, is mm-hmm. a precursor to something much worse. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was uh, an odd story that I grabbed here this morning. Um, also, Hotel Utica, let's get right into it. And this doctor's thing, too, we have new, new information on the, uh, the pediatrician's story, uh, which filtered out yesterday stuff we thought we knew and some stuff we didn't know, uh, but there was information that came out yesterday. Um, uh, what, do we, uh, what do we think about the hotel? Great news, right? There's an $800,000-plus check coming to the city of Utica. There'll be uh, another 400000 I think, coming to the county. Uh, this deal is done. It's a reputable, uh, a reputable organization. They have uh, the Holiday Inn Express and a couple of others already in, in the city. Um, and their plan is to bring uh, uh, maybe a Hilton Resort um, uh, into Hotel Utica. This could be really huge news for this iconic Utica landmark. Iconic and historic, right? Yeah, yeah. 19, what, 14, 20? I don't know. I forget when it was built. So will it be it's, like uh, a... incredible. W- whatever the 
franchise name, whether whether it be uh, the Hilton Al- or Marriott. They're, 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 the company's referencing either Hilton or Marriott. Will Utica, uh, Hotel Utica still be incorporated in the name I would imagine. Um, because of the history? I would think so, because yeah. of the history. I think they did the same thing with the Hotel Syracuse. And, by the way, Hotel Syracuse is getting its own um, refurbishment and uh, and reopening over there. So I thought they just did <clears> a few years ago. Yeah, I think it's been going on, but it's still in the news out there. I haven't been paying much attention uh, to it. However, um, for us, this is a big deal. We'll talk to Bill Morehouse later on this morning. They were uh, celebrating yesterday. We've kind of known this was going on for the last uh, 10 months, maybe, and it just couldn't be finished. The deal couldn't be done. And finally, it has finished, which is great news for the uh, for the area. And, uh, you know, you get a chain like this coming in or a, a management group like this that brings a chain in. It can uh, then you're on the lists. Then when you, you go to your apps and you're looking for a hotel, you see the word Marriott or you see the word Hilton. That is big. That's that's really um, something that people look for. Right when they uh, when they're looking to to stay here and it might shock everybody but uh, we do and have had and that seems to be reduced now tremendously but have had a pretty severe hotel shortage in this area uh, especially during the summer months it's tough to get into a get into a room uh, over the summer christine has an update lots to get into i want to talk about this pediatrician issue in a second here's christine now with her update 619 good morning good morning this news update brought to you by mavis discount tire log on and save at mavis tire.com president obama remembering the lives lost in the 1945 atomic bombing of Hiroshima in Japan. Hillary Clinton does not believe that Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump will debate. The search continues for a California teen who was abducted Wednesday and last seen bleeding and yelling for help. And there are two first-place finishers in this year's National Spelling Bee. Did you see some of the words? Yeah, I can't Uh, pronounce them, and I certainly could never spell them. Well, today, uh, sunny clouds. High 88. Tonight... Uh, low 62. Tomorrow, partly cloudy. Sunny clouds, 92. Uh, clouds, it looks to be on Sunday, not a washout. Maybe some thunderstorms, 88. But uh, right now, Monday, looks like cloudy and showers and thunderstorms with a high near 80. Not a bad weekend, a hot weekend. It will not be a washout, but it also won't be all perfectly sunny all weekend long. But, hey, we'll take it currently. It is a bit humid, 60 already, 67 degrees. And I wanted to throw out our story, what I think is the crazy story of the day. Every day needs a crazy story of the day. And, Andrew, is, uh, can, do you have Simon Owen? Can we do yes, him here? he is here live. I'd like to squeeze this in right now. Uh, Simon Owen, Fox News Radio, on the line right now. And this is a crazy U.K. story. Uh, good morning, Simon. Good morning, uh, we're looking at a guy who lives as a... <laughs> well, he, he temporarily lived as a goat, and I went to see him um, a few days ago and can confirm he turned up on two feet wearing human clothes and is back now as a human and insists he's happy about that. But he decided that modern life was getting a bit much. He's yeah, a man yeah. called Thomas Thwaites. He's kind of a bit of a sort of... Ex- experimenter, inventor, perhaps author, scientist, maybe, somewhere in between all of those things. I asked him what his job was, and he couldn't quite decide. Yeah. And he was saying that the, 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 the idea, that this came to him when he was um, looking after his niece's dog one night, and he was having job trouble, he was having relationship trouble, and he looked at the dog and said that he found himself thinking, look at you, you're so lucky, you don't have any worries, you're fine. And I, I don't know if you've maybe had a similar thought maybe at some point you look at animal and go actually you know what that looks so simple and straightforward yeah. the difference is most people leave it at that or in this guy his name is Thomas Thwaites uh, decided to pursue it and figure out if he could take a vacation basically from being human and that's what he did so he went to all sorts of experts he had uh, various things in place so that he could eat grass he had a whole prosthetic suit built this was not something he just sort of did on the back of an envelope this was a very serious uh, and, and in-depth project he came up with and once he'd got his prosthetics in place and everything else and his fake stomach and all that he uh, went and contacted a goat herd in the swiss alps and went to live with a load of goats for three days oh and then left his goat friends behind <laughs> and uh, set off to try and walk across the alps and he gave up on the alps after three days but nonetheless sure. he managed three days which i think is pretty good going yeah uh, and it's all uh, it's, it's all part of an experiment and he's written a book and, and there you go now he's back here in london 
Uh, you know, I can't help but think that uh, he might be the descend- a descendant of George Orwell, and you know, because he was standing up, and maybe you know, uh, you know, goat standing up. Anybody read Animal Farm? No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, I got it. I <laughs> just. Uh, well, Andrew. Uh, although he was on all fours, this guy, though. So we were oh, he was. All right. All right. Well, oh, okay. Gosh. All right. Andrew. No, no. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> the experiment, Andrew. though, is the experiment is what? It's to show what life is like without any worries at all? And I, th- how- I, think, that, I think that was the idea. But yeah. actually, when he got there, he found out that, you know, wearing prosthetics and any amputee will tell you this. It means just they rub on your skin. They're incredibly, yeah. becoming incredibly uncomfortable. I think he, he was hoping that he'd sort of be like, you know, that the runners at the Paralympics, where they're on those tiny, very slick blades that they go bouncing along. He said he wanted to gallop. He wanted to experience yeah. what it would be like to gallop through the mountains. I mean, if you do ever go to the mountains and watch what goats do on the side of those hills, they are very nimble creatures. Yeah. That's what Thomas Thwaites was hoping to replicate, and then he uh, couldn't in the end, so he lumbered along on all fours for a few days and then called it quits. And I did say to him, you know, you went looking for this peace and this, and did, you, did you find any happiness? Did you find any peace? And he, he said momentarily <laughs> he yeah. did. He found it meditative, albeit um, with a lot of pain thrown in. He's not ruling out, though, going back again this summer. He said he's had loads of offers to go and do it again. So now that he knows what he's in for, he's not ruling out a repeat for his summer vacation this year well i'm sure he's feeling less pain uh knowing that we're actually covering this story so <laughs> yeah you maybe go. you'll go and look at his book up afterwards yeah, as well all right all right simon thanks so much enjoy the weekend thanks a lot uh, simon on fox news quick break come right back we'll have a free money question of the day chance for you to win one two and three hundred dollars or three hundred dollars from the hobiko law firm coming up on wibx and uh, let's get into this pediatrician uh, issue what we know today that we didn't know yesterday next on wibx